Well, already it's been a, several months since I've been on my channel and uh, just want to do a little update. Um, hope everybody had a good holiday and everything. I've been, believe it or not, almost a year later I've got COVID again. So I've got some time. <laughs> it's terrible when you get sick is the only time you've got to go out and play with your trains, huh? Anyway, this is a, a Lionel um, Line Chief Plus uh, A5, that's what they call it. I think I did a, I think I did a little review on uh, one of these. I don't remember if it was this one or, or the other one. Anyway, uh, this was actually the Bethlehem Steel one. This is the remote for it, and I relettered it for the uh, Santa Fe. And it's a little bit unusual. Uh, looks different. I thought it would be kind of unique. But since Lionel didn't make a run of these in Santa Fe, uh, I decided to change it, leave the 140 on there. And maybe just put a sticker on the uh, the remote, you know. Anyway, it's a great running little loco. They got some neat features. Uh, I got this one, and I've got the uh, Southern Pacific one there. And I think I'll probably just leave that one uh, unlettered. But uh, anyway, uh, other than that, uh, the only changes I've made. I came in and I replaced a couple of the uh, American Flyer switches I had, like those. I had a couple over here you may or may not remember, but, uh, and I added this one. This is a Hornby uh, switch. Uh, same basic principle. This one's what they call a two foot radius, uh, which I'm assuming would be, you know, a 48 inch for us here. And these are, uh, by a company called Dorfin. And these are probably the oldest switches I've got. Uh, Dorfin, I think, went out of business in 1938 or something like that. But it's a little bit more realistic looking switch than the uh, the flyers, which I like the flyers. Functions wise, they're great. It's basically the same kind of design. The, uh, the frog has a separate cast in piece here that you can actually you can undo all these rails and take them off and i had to do i had to do a little surgery on there because some of these old switches are pretty beat up on the ends of the rails here and i've smoothed this off but it's still the engines give it a little bit of a jolt going in there but you know i can't complain for the age uh put that one over there and i just thought overall it made it look a little better especially since i got these two ross here uh, I wish Ross made more variety of these in, uh, in 031, you know, but not yet. I wish they'd make a design like these with the uh, closing frog because the Marks engines really run well through these. The Marks engines don't like this, these uh, Ross too well. I mean, they'll go through this one okay. That one has a little bit of a trouble. I guess it's it's got to do, I guess, with the uh, the frog here. I really don't know, but anyway. Uh, hadn't done a whole lot else. I was out here cleaning and reorganizing my, my workbench. This is one of the Hornby's before. I haven't cleaned this one up yet. I uh, worked on the rails a little bit, uh, cleaning these ends up. And uh, they're... Uh, there's hardly any rust or anything on this one. It's just a simple little design. I don't know why somebody doesn't still make these. I know Mercur, Czechoslovakia, or wherever that place is, they uh, they make them, but you just can't get them without, you know, having to go through a couple of countries. Anyway, it's a neat design. And if you get everything right working on them, they're extremely smooth. And the rollers don't have too much of a tr trouble with these. So at least so far, I haven't. And of course the Marks engines go right through them because they've just got the, you know, the little blade on the bottom of the engines. But anyway, <clears throat> I hadn't done a whole lot of much else. Uh, all I do is work all the time. You know, I added, of course when I put this switch in, I added this uh, 
extra track here, this, this really helps because I just didn't have enough storage space. Uh, I like to be able to pull the whole trains into the there and pull a whole nother one out. Uh, you know, don't do a lot of switching, but you know, there's just never enough room when you got this uh, old scale stuff. It just swallows up everything. You got those three little buildings back there from, I think it was Michael's or Joanne's my wife goes to. They were marked down for Christmas. I thought I might be able to paint them and put them in the background. They look pretty good, close to old scale. Got a couple more in the house I left for the Christmas tree. Uh, but anyway, um, I guess that's about it. Uh, well, everybody know I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're mostly just cleaning and reorganizing out here. You can't believe how filthy things get when they don't get used. Uh, picked up that little caboose. I don't know if I showed that to anybody or not. Uh, it's, that, it's an old time caboose, but they got the Burlington Northern Santa Fe logo on it, which I thought was kind of odd, but that's MTH, you know. I think they made that just before they uh, closed the doors. Anyhow, well, this one I thought turned out pretty well. It's like I said, it's not prototype because this is a, even with the Southern Pacific over there, it's got this Penzi boiler. You can tell this is a Penzi design. At least that's what I, I think it is. So putting a Santa Fe, you know, sticker on it ain't gonna make no difference. Drive the people that are prototype crazy, but then again, we got three rails, not two. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all for now.